Do you still do premarital uh, counseling? I do it myself sometimes. Yes. And so when you so when you've done that, what are some of the things that you see are recurring issues that pop up that that seems to be mm-hmm. the same thing no matter what the couple is? This couple in January they dealt with the same thing, and you find that as a recurring thing as culture has changed. Is there something that's identifiable that has been a consistent thing with couples all across the board? You're not going. I'm going to give you three things, but you're not going to like any of them. Oh gosh. Number one. Consistently across the board. If they're over 35, I find that they're desperate. Really? And it's desperation that's driving it. Yeah. Really? Yes. So, and it's usually the female in this case. It's usually the female that's so desperate to, to get somebody because I know what it is. She is she's climbing the corporate ladder, things are going well. The only thing she cannot control is a, is a husband. Is a spouse. Yep. And so she's trying now to do anything to get married real quick so she can look the part. As she continues to climb the corporate ladder. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. (laughs) We share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise Mm-mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey. Thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you sell it scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people. It means men. It means resources. And it means means. I'm Lataris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Whitfield. Listen, season six has been kicking off with an amazing start. But hey, before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, listen, this is an episode you want to watch all the way to the end. Um, I love when I have guests that return to the podcast this guest, when he came on the podcast, he was on an episode that really transformed my life. And um, we're going to get an update on that. And we're going to go a little bit deeper uh, in these relationship streets. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Pastor Conway Edwards. How you doing, brother? I am fantastic, my friend. <laughs> an honor to be here again. Cannot wait to jump into this discussion today. Now, you asked me before we start, you said, now, what is the audience? What what type of audience do you have? Is it predominantly Christian audience or is it a mixture of secular and Christian? Why mm-hmm. is that important? Uh, just so that I can, uh, you know, contextualize whatever questions you ask me to make sure that we're reaching the wider audience and not just a, a, a focused, targeted audience. And I said, I want you to be Pastor Conway Edwards. That's it. <laughs> I want you to be Pastor. Sometimes I have people on the podcast and I say, hey, listen, I want to talk to I want to talk to Conway. I don't want to talk to the pastor. I want, right. I want to keep it real. Right. But uh, I would be doing you a disservice because that's how I feel like you show up in my life as a pastor. Um, and I totally understand what that that. Yeah. Mantle is. And so today, you know, you have this book that came out and we're going to well, unpack this book. Uh, but before we get to this book, we're going to I'm going to have to give you an update on, come on. on where I, I've been on my abstinence journey. Come on. How is it going? Uh, it's going better now. It's going to start it back over again. OK. Yeah. I, I, I started on it that December of 2020. <laughs> I fell off about six months later and then I'm, I'm back on the on the pony again. And so I said, I'm going to go ahead and hold this thing all the way until I say I do. Come on, man. Well, I'm just proud of you. The idea is not perfection, but to get a little better, surrender a little more every single day. So we're proud of you that you're still in pursuit of doing what you know God's called you to do. So well done, my friend. I was scared to tell you that, Pastor. (laughs) I was scared. I thought fire and brimstone was going to rain from heaven, and I I got scared. And I've been saying, I hope he don't call me and ask me that. I just hope he don't call me. And so I had to just go ahead and be transparent and let you know. Well, here's the good news, man. Since the grace of God pours down on everybody every day, we got to appreciate God's grace. We don't want to abuse it, but we got to appreciate the grace of God that all of us are in need of on an everyday 
basis. You know what? That means a lot because a lot of times in, in the church, people feel condemned because mm-hmm. they feel like church holds this standard that most people can't live up to. And if they fall short, then they're not really saved. They're not really Christians. What would you say about that? Oh, that's easy because <clears throat> you got to realize that the Apostle Paul, when he was almost on his deathbed, said these statements. He said, I am the chief of all sinners. What does mm. that mean? Here goes the most spiritual man you know. And well, here's what he realizes. The closest he got to God, the more sinful he realized he really was, Ooh. which means that it doesn't matter who you are. What matters is you might you might know not do the big sins you used to do, but the closer you get to God, you realize your thought life, how bad they are and how you need to clean those up. So we all, every last one of us are sitting under the waterfall of God's grace. And anybody you hear that mm. speaks as if they are perfect, they're what we call, the Bible calls Pharisees, which means they're only talking about a certain set of sins. They're not talking about what Jesus talks about, which is the sin of omission and the sin of commission. Mm. You have both of them that you got to address as well. Well, see, people don't know what that means. Now, you may be talking over people's head. You said omission and commission. I want you to break that down. Well, for example, God says, hey, man, I want you to go, you therefore, and make disciples. There are a lot of people not making disciples. Facts. But they don't realize that that's a sin too when you're not doing something that you know you ought to be doing. Mm. And then there are sins that you that you know that you shouldn't be doing, and some of those you're still doing. All of us do. So he says, this is why you got to watch the Word of God, which is why you got to plead the grace of God. Because here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in the Old Testament, <clears throat> if you slept with somebody, then that's sin. In the New Testament, he raises the ante. Says, if you thought says, about it. If you even thought about it, said, you sin. Now, is there one around here that, that <laughs> that's not in need of the grace of God. Well, since I am, I'm going to bask in the grace of God without willfully, intentionally violating God's word. So your only your only desire is that you will say to God, God, will you help me take the next step? And will you help me walk in the truth of the light of your word in the next step? And if you do that, then praise God. When you fall short, your assignment is to go back to the God and says, God, will you please forgive me and then start living righteously again? But you know what? Like, when I first got saved, I I read those scriptures, and it was like, hey, Old Testament, if you lay down with another man's wife or whatever, Mm -hmm. especially, you know, out of wedlock, then you sin, but if you thought about it. And I used to use that as a pass to say, well— if I already thought about it and this is a sin, I might as well go ahead and act on it. Right. So I would actually be like, well, let me go ahead and and, and, and smash your girl. Since I thought about it and the sin is equal, I might as well get the benefit of the sin. So what do you say about that? What do you say about oh. literally Old Testament, New Testament, and sin being sin? Yeah. So therefore, I, what I would suggest in those situations is you've got to remember it's your job to monitor your heart. Mm. What God cares about deeply is your heart. Yes. That is why he doesn't discard uh, David after David's sin. And he says, this is a man after my, my own, heart. own heart. Here's why that's important. Because when he when he fell short of God's standards, he was broken about it. Yes. The problem in today's generation is we fall short and we ain't broken about it. Anybody crying over your sin? Anybody grieving over their sin? Yeah. Which means one of two things. Either you really ain't saved. Preach, Pastor. <laughs> or, or you are in, in that particular area, your mind. heart is so hardened yeah. against God that you're just doing whatever you want, which means you are setting yourself up for a shockwave from God because you're enticing him. And remember, got to always remember, God doesn't like competing with anything. And when you put something above God, which is the, your sin of choice, then you're inviting him to get your attention. So one of two reasons we do it. Either we we're not saved, or we're saved, and we're living in a way that we shouldn't, which means we're inviting God to get our attention. Mm. Did you know that the Dear Future Wifey podcast is number one in Jamaica? Well, guess what? We are going to go to Montego Bay, May the 4th through the 7th. We have teamed up with I Can't Wait to Travel, and we've put together this beautiful event. We've curated this amazing excursion. Uh, let, me, let me just be honest with y'all real quick. I don't take vacations. I haven't taken a vacation in four years. Pretty sad. Listen, don't feel sorry for me. Because when I'm out there in Mo Bay, we're going to have some fun. So you got to say Mo Bay to make it seem like you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? You got to say Mo Bay. So we're going to be in Mo Bay having a great time. We're going to have great excursions. We're going to do a live podcast recording. You know what? Let me just put this in the atmosphere. Because this season is about miracles and manifestations. It's my goal to interview the prime minister and his wife on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Now, how awesome would that be? 
Yeah, yeah. So if y'all know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, let them know that I want him to be on the podcast. It's only $100 to reserve your spot. So go ahead and reserve your spot so they don't fill up and you're watching us on the gram wishing that you were there. Go to ICan'tWaitToTravel.com. That's I-C-W-T-T dot com. I-C-W-T-T dot com. Click under group travel and you'll see us as the first getaway in the month of May. Join us at Mo Bay, May the 4th through the 7th. Listen, I can't wait to see you there. We're going to have an amazing time. You know, it's the worst thing to do when you invite God to get your oh attention. Oh, my God. You're uh, right. Oh, uh, you don't want that because no, that, that, that exposure to sin is something that <laughs> is crippling. It really, really is. Yeah. Really, and then really you is. definitely don't want to get to the point where God has surrendered you over to a reprobate mind, where you have no no uh, conviction at all that's about correct. the sin that you that's uh, correct. sin that that's you do correct. or whatnot. I, and and that's such a a that's so, and it has become so normative in our culture that yes. we don't realize it. Because what most what you do when you go to most churches, they preach the reward, they don't teach the principle. They teach, here is what God's going to do for you, yes. but they don't teach the process that God takes to get you there, which means it is the process that leads to the benefit of the reward. But all we preach as pastors mm. sometimes is here's what God's going to do for you, and you don't realize the pain and the process that you got to go through to get teach. there. Therefore, it's our job. When when God gets your attention and says, come on, man, you know Purity leads to clarity. Yes. What that means is the more pure you are, the better you will see. If you're not pure, yeah. then you're not going to see clearly, which is why you're going to marry a fool. And in about 18 months, you're going to get a divorce because you were clouded in your mind because you wasn't pure when you made that decision. Ooh. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, Lord, That's yours. why you don't teach people. You don't teach people. Don't sleep with each other. You remind them. Purity leads to clarity. Mm. And so if you want to make clear decisions, then you got to be pure before God. When I say that's the truth, I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it when I operated outside mm -hmm. of that and how how my vision becomes 2020 when I'm under the the submission of God that's and true. his word. I'd be like, oh, I, you just feel different. I walk different. <laughs> I think different. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on a different level. Yeah. I'm vibrating on a, a high level. Because and, you can sense the anointing yes. of God over your life in that yes. moment. But when you act in a plum fool, you, you'll be looking behind your back saying, okay, God, you're you like, going to get me you now, be scared. God? you be like, man, yeah. I'm finna, it, it's been times where I was on my way. To a booty call, and I'm like, man, I hope I don't get in a wreck and die. In the name you know, of Jesus. You be, you be, you be, you be thinking real you bad. Know you know you're doing something you ain't got no business. Like, man, I'm going to die today. Watch. They're going to find out oh, where man. I was on my way. Yeah. You know, and so we just don't want to live in that level of uh, condemnation That's and it. to actually walk in freedom and That's just it. submit. Because the sooner we, what God was, you know, like I said before in our first episode, God told me I'll never be faithful to my wife unless I first become faithful to him. That's it. And so it's through the act of submission. The And it's not easy. It's an act of a sacrifice. I mean, when you have a 44 year old man. I'm 44 years old. Yes, sir. So you have a 44 year old man saying, I'm a practice abstinence. It goes against our whole. It goes against our bodies. Because yes, at this does. age, I should have been married. I should be actively engaging in sex with my wife. Yes. And so abstinence was, quote, unquote, really intended for teenagers. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then we got married. And then you don't have to worry about no, that no more if you never got divorced. Correct. And so we, we, we've we gotten to this cycle of sin to where I got married. Your body gets acclimated to having sex That's on it. a regular. And That's then you it. get a divorce. And then it's like, now be abstinent. Now your body going through withdrawals yep. and all that stuff. And so, I mean, that's something that definitely needs to be addressed in, you know, the way that we do life and the way we do marriage. But before we get to marriage, you have written this amazing book about... Mm -hmm. Watch the flags. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So when you say watch the flags, we hear so much about red flags. I mean, until we turn blue in the face. Yeah. Um, tell me, first of all, let's go back. What made you write this book? The reason I wrote this book is because of my heart for singles across the body of Christ. It really is. Uh, the, 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 the more desperate you are, the more you're going to qualify for divorce when you get married. Mm. And I have seen singles make this make 
poor choices over and over and over again. And usually it's because they're so desperate to get out of single prison yeah. that they want to get married so quickly. And it's the second most important decision you'll ever make. Yeah. Most important decision you'll ever make. Right. And yet still, we just, we just with desperation, run into it. And I wanted to give us some, some clues, some signals, some flags. I'm on the beach one day and I'm in Jamaica and I'm looking at these flags and they take out one, the red flag and they put a green flag and then a yellow flag. And I'm like, boy, if, if, if relationally mm. we could simply have signs like that, it might help us make better decisions. And you know this, you know this, yeah. you're a product of the decisions that you make. And so what I'm trying to do is help singles, young and old, make wiser choices by discerning the flags before they run into a relationship. Well, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. So what? <laughs> You know, without giving the whole book away, what are some of the red flags that we need to look to, look look at early on in this in these dating streets? All right, so <laughs> so there 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 are nine categories, and from these nine categories, there are red flags and green flags in each one of them. Okay. So, so nine whole categories. So you have things like the 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 character the character flag. Yes. What, what does that look like? Or you have things like the expectation flag mm. or the relational flag. Or you have things like. Well, how about the conflict flag? Can they deal with conflict? Mm. Because if they can't deal with conflict now, it means you're an accident waiting to happen later. Facts. So you've got to look at these nine categories and look at what you should be doing, the sexual flags, and what you should not be doing as you go down the path. And so I think what I'd love for singles to do is when you get the book is just to look at these nine categories, almost take them out, put them on the wall, and then you just you don't go tell anybody, well, let me check these flags <laughs> off. Obviously, you don't do that. <laughs> but you just have them in your in your thoughts yeah. and in the back of your mind and use it because here's what we can do. And you know this. Yeah. When you meet somebody, your heart is going to tell your brain mm -hmm. to come up with a lot of reasons why the flag you see is not the ain't that bad. Yeah, ain't the flag. Am I lined up? You, facts. You, your heart's going to say, because you're you're so emotionally engaged, yeah. your heart's going to say to your brain, uh, that's not that bad. Oh, I can work with that. <laughs> that's not that big a deal. Come on. Let's work through it. And I'm here to tell you, you have you know a lot of friends that when they do this, you say to them, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> stop it, run in the other direction, and you're going to say, yeah, that's them, but that not so with me. Yeah. I'm a little smarter than the <laughs> average person. And I'm telling you today, I'm the, the reason I write this book with passion is because I am concerned about the generational problems we're having when you have a divorce and when it goes from divorce and then the kids see it and now they don't believe in marriage and they don't believe in, 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 in quality men or quality women. Now you've just shaped a whole generation and it breaks my heart to see it happen over and over again especially in the african-american community you know what you start the book off chapter one character flags come on that's where we start character flags you don't want to know Woo! when their character is not what attracts you to them don't now, get me started so so hold on you have to help me understand that so if if you tell me you'll find people that's attracted to people but it's not their character that's drawing them to them what is it, their finances? Is it their looks or whatever? They say they just fine. Oh. I don't even want to go there with you. We you know, you know, you know that for most. Let's start with the guys on the on the, on the guy side first. Guys, you know it. You know it, man. <laughs> you see a little bit of booty, and all of a sudden, you cannot get your eyes off of that booty. Facts. You know what I'm talking about. And so, because of that, all I'm trying to suggest to you. If booty is what drew you to them, <laughs> then booty gonna keep you on that. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Which means if it is not the character that drew you in, mm. if it's not character, then something else drew you in. And whatever it is, ladies, 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 listen up. And if that's what drew them to you, somebody have a better booty, yes, better set of chest, yeah. better, cuter, smarter, younger. The list continues. Yeah. All I'm trying to suggest to you is, if it's not the character that draw, I'm not saying that's the only thing. Yeah. Please, Lord, make it be something else, just that <laughs> character. But I'm I'm suggesting it ought to be the main thing that draws us in. It is a huge deal because at the end of the day, if you take God's word seriously, and He says for richer, for boring, sickness, and yeah. till death do us part, then anything can happen in that relationship, and you better be able to tee it up to be ready. That says I trust this person, and they love. Here we go. They love God more than they love me, so I. 
I know they will be faithful. They will be committed to the relationship, even if they got to take care of me for the rest of my life. Talk about it. Mm. It's not just the booty. Mm. It's not just the legs. It's not just the eyes. And it might not be their... Stop. Go ahead. What else you got? Stop. I ain't going no more. I'm, I'm no, sorry. Gotta, My bad. Ahead. My bad. No, no, no. We, since, we, we, since we stop right there, we're going to jump all the way to this other flag because you don't hear churches talk about this. You said uh, uh, green and red flags about sex? That singles should discuss that? Let me help you out again. The sex one's a big one. And it's a big one because in our culture today, everything, everything, because they know sex sells, yeah. they drive Everything, every marketing campaign yeah. is driven by um, <clears throat> trying to be, trying to pull you in with the sex card. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's what that means, fellas. We're talking about fellas today a lot, boy. Here's what that means, fellas. That means if she, you know this, if she will sleep with you before you marry her, who's to tell that she won't sleep with somebody else while you're married to her? Here's the problem with us. Please listen to me. Here's the problem with us. It is okay if you cheat on God, but it's not okay if they cheat on you. Let me say it again. It's okay if when you are sleeping with each other, and you know God don't like that. You're good with that. Because guess what? We're doing it for each other. We're satisfying each other, even though we're breaking the heart of God, right? Yeah, everybody good. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem. Flip it now. Let's say they, one of them, guy or girl, sleeps with somebody else. So now you're feeling the pain of that. You're feeling the pain God feels when you were shacking and sleeping before you got married. But now, because you are the beneficiary of that pain, mm. you all of a sudden get all bent out of shape, mad. Well, no, you didn't. You don't know who you're <laughs> fooling with. Well, here's the problem with that. Then you, now in God's position, you want to get bent out of shape. It's the same way you need to feel. When you're the when you are fully benefiting from the from the pleasures of intimacy, that's how God feels. And so, therefore, if you don't want to feel the way God feels when you're doing it, then maybe you shouldn't do it in the first place. Mm. No, I'm not suggesting that this is easy. And I'm just as a, you know here going out of pastor telling me I can't sleep around with nobody else. All I'm trying to suggest to you is be careful because whatever you do to get the dude. Is what you're going to have to keep doing to keep him. Now, in marriage, the problem becomes, now you have this dude that's that you are cool with and you love it and it's all great and it's wonderful. And then something happens and then he goes somewhere else or she goes somewhere else. And all of a sudden you get mad. That's how God feels. That's, that's how he feels. How can you evolve to the state of mind you openly confess your faults? Healing. Imagine a life where you are unapologetically you. Freedom. What could you accomplish fully showing up in every area of your life? Anything. Your new life of endless possibilities awaits. Become an exclusive member of the Lit Society. We are all flawed humans. The difference between the Lit Society and others is we admit it and then do something about it to impact the world. We keep it lit. Live intentionally and transparently. This isn't just another program. It's reprogramming destructive mindsets to live intentionally and transparently. Become lit. Join the elite and become a member of the Lit Society today. It's quiet in here. Y'all all right? No. It's quiet. <laughs> no. No. We got to get resuscitated. <laughs> you know, we, we out of here. We dead. It's the truth, man. It, it is just, the People just logging off. I truth. feel the spirit of logging <laughs> off right now fall over everybody on this YouTube channel. They're logging off. They said, God didn't tell me to watch this episode. 
They said New Year's Day is coming up, and no I'm finna mercy. have some fun. I'm finna go, you know, I'm outside. That's a new saying, Pastor Conway. We we outside now. We, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, they said we outside, so they're out it. there living their best life. So they don't they don't, they don't want to hear all that. I know, you know they what I'm don't. Saying? I know they don't. And, and the reason why I know that to be true is because I don't play games with God. I know I've I've checked it out. Like mm-hmm. when God told me uh, before I got married the first time that I'll never be faithful to my wife unless I first become uh, faithful to Him. You got. I was it. like, ah, that that sounds great. But when I get married, the sex is going to be great. It's going to be bountiful. And so I ain't going to need to cheat. Yeah. But then I got married and my wife wasn't that sexual. Right. And so I hadn't, I didn't have any discipline in my life. And my so God. when I was lacking, I said, oh, I got to go get this need filled. Yeah. But yeah. had I disciplined my body in advance, that would have never been a Goliath that came to destroy me. That's exactly right, man. And I'm, pr- and I'm, I'm proud of you that you are aware of it, that you caught it, and that you now see the folly of the argument you allowed your brain to come up with. 100%. Which is incredible, man. I'm proud of you for that. I really, man, really that's am. That's 100 because I look at it and I'm like, do I, am I... Because if I keep doing the same thing, You're that's called insanity. That's it. I'm, in, I'm insane. It. And I'll, you know, yes, I pride sir. myself of being an intelligent person. Yes, sir. So I'm walking around here insane. So I'm like, no, I know this. And it just keeps getting trapped by the same thing. Yeah. What's, what, what's another flag uh, that um, you want to share with us? Yeah. So so there, there, there are tons of them, right? So on the expectation one, right? Oh, I, you, I like that. On one. the expectation. What do you expect to people? You expect marriage to fix the other person. Now, mm. that's a red flag. If you're expecting marriage to fix the person, then then it's only a matter of time before you're going to be disappointed again. For example, fellas, if all of a sudden she's bossy before marriage <laughs> and she tell you what to do and run your life and think, well, when I'm in charge and when I'm the man, <laughs> it's going to change. I'm just telling you. If she bossy before, <laughs> it's who she is. She can't change it. So then when you get married, don't expect her all of a sudden to be submissive. Yeah, Why do we yeah. think a miracle going to happen all of a sudden overnight? <laughs> Ladies, if this young man wants to hang out with his boys all the way to one, two, three, four in the morning and come back home at five and you think, I know. But when I tie the knot, it all is going to change. I'm just, marriage ain't going to fix it. It's not going, they're showing you who they are. Believe them. Yeah. And don't tell your heart, don't tell, don't make your heart tell your brain to come up with reasons why this is okay and it will all change later. It's not going to. Therefore, make the hard choice now. I know it's tough. But I'm telling you, it, 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 it's much better than having two or three kids in the mix. Yeah. And now you have to make the tough decision. Yeah. And you're not, ju- you're not just ruining your life. You're ruining theirs. Because now they don't have a model to look forward to mm. as to what a healthy marriage looks like. By the way, which is why so many people don't believe in marriage anymore. Yes. Because they haven't seen a lot of models where yeah. we can say, I want to be like them. Yeah. And we haven't seen a lot of humility where stuff happens and say, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Please forgive me. And so because we haven't seen it, then it's hard to run after it. So we just say, we're not going to do it. Which is also why, watch this now, why there's not a lot of um, music anymore that talks about the beauty of love. Man, I you know thought why about it's that. not oh, there? Talk. Because we don't believe in it anymore. Be- so then, so if you go 20 years ago, oh my gosh, yes. 30 years ago, you had some incredible love song. Yeah. No more. It's all about shaking something, getting something, hitting something, smashing something, because we don't believe in this beautiful thing hmm. called marriage anymore. You know what? You said something. I was talking to a friend about that the other day, and I was like, where's the where's the love songs? Mm-hmm. I mean, everything you have, some of the biggest artists, all they're talking about, like women artists, is talking about how great their vagina is. Yep. I was listening to this one artist. I was doing a photo shoot for a client, and they played this artist, this rapper, and a whole, every song, every track just came on. She's talking about her vagina is this, her vagina. I said, she is very fascinated about her vagina. <laughs> like, every song is about how great her vagina is. Isn't that sad? I, I said, this is absolutely crazy. You know, but we don't have, and those would be the hits songs for the summer or yes, whatnot. It and it's like, um, where are the love songs? Yep. Where are the Lenny Williams because I love That's you? It. Like, where are those where are those Jodeces and stuff? It's yep. like, where are those boys to men? Yep. It's like, it's that culture is over. It's, it's over. all about sex. But it's because what we glorify now is sex. Yeah. Not what God created to be marriage. We glorify myself, how I look, what I have. We do not any longer um, honor, uh, uh, highlight this beautiful thing that God created called marriage. And you got to remember now, um, uh, 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 marriage with a husband and wife is not the ultimate, 
I'm going to go a little deep. No, I'm sorry. Go it's ahead. not the ultimate. It's actually the penultimate. It's the, it's the thing that God says, I want you to taste what it's going to be like mm. when you and I get together yes. face to face. So the beautiful thing for Christians is Teach. the ultimate marriage is not a man and a woman. That's just a taste of what really is going to happen when you see Christ face to face. But ain't nobody talking about seeing Jesus face to face. That's not the thing we long for. What we long for, no. Why am I talking like I'm preaching? Let me calm down. I'm so sorry. Well, I mean, it's in you. It's in you. It's in you. you got, and, 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 and you're Jamaican, so it's just going to come out. You know what I'm saying? You're very passionate people. So, so the beauty of it is what we should long for, yearn for, desire, is, is this thing when we see Christ face to face. That's what the believer should be longing for. Mm. We're not even talking about that. Marriage is a taste of what that ultimately is going to look like and experience and feel like. Yes. And God says, I just want to give you a taste of what it is when you get a husband and wife together. But we have, have, have stopped completely talking about what it's going to be like when we see Jesus face to face. So nobody's looking for the return of Christ. Mm. No. Why? We don't need to do that. What we're looking for is what's in it for me and what's in it for me right now. That's because we're a part of a culture that says me first. God, you somewhere in the distance, but it's me first. So since that's what the culture celebrates, then in relationships, we celebrate that too. Now, the irony of that is that now God is saying, no, but the way marriage works is you're not first. Actually, your spouse is supposed to be first. Mm. So the reason why we don't have successful marriages is because our culture demands that you put yourself first. And then we go into marriage with two people putting themselves first, <laughs> which is reason why we can't ever come together to genuinely love each other because we don't know how, because nobody's any longer teaching what it looks like to say, I am going to sacrifice me for the benefit of the other person. I'm done. That's a mouthful. Let me stop right there. What do you got, Doc? Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> when I say that is blessing my soul, mm -mm. It's, it's because that's what marriage is about. It's about sacrifice. It is. It's, it's literally about saying, how can I serve you? What can I do for you today to make your life better, to put a smile on your face, to you lighten the load for you? And it's so sad that, um, and I see these things popping up on social media where they say 85%, 80 to 85% of divorces are initiated by women. Yep. That women, that staying power that women used to have back in the day where they, now I know it's, it was wrapped up in toxicity sometimes, yep. where you, they'll stay with grandpa and he got three kids down the street by three different women or whatnot, but she had the staying power that kept her there. Versus nowadays, the lights get cut off. Woman, well, like I ain't doing this. I can do battle by myself, and she you leave got, you. Whoop. You know, it's like it's it's it's, <clears> it's, <throat> yeah. it's it's this shift that has happened. Uh, women are out earning men nowadays. So yeah. back in the day, where yep. people were women had to be uh, locked in a relationship out Dependent. of survival. Yes. Now they're like, oh, I got my own money. I, ain't got, I, ain't I don't got need to, you no more. I'm out. That's <laughs> it. And I'm it. not putting up with this. <laughs> and so that's the interesting dynamic that has taken place because it's, it's just the loyalty. I looked yeah. at it. Um, I was talking to a friend um, about a month ago and we were talking about even the longevity on jobs have yes. changed. You have people that will work at a job, started working at 18, they retire at 60. You know what I'm my, saying? My, my, Nowadays, my, my. it'd be like, who paying them more the next day? Put, get a job, be like, yeah. this is my dream job. I was talking to one of my friends. She got this job. She was like, man, I've been wanting to get this job. Uh, <laughs> this is my. This is the job I want. It was paying $180,000. She said, this is everything I want. My, my. I talked to her a month and a half later. I'm done. She was I'm like, out. I'm putting, I'm trying to look for another job. I said, what happened? I said, what, what, what happened? She's like, well, no, nah, I think I can make more. I think I can do it. I said, well, but this was your dream job. That's what, it. what happened? That's you it. was happy. You was praying. I prayed with you for you to get the job. You got the job. Yep. It, it, six weeks later, you already want something else. You got it, you man. go to the highest bidder. What do you think has happened to where people, they don't, a lot of people don't possess that longevity anymore to stay committed, even when the times get hard? Yeah, I think, I think our culture and what our culture highlights is individualism, mm. freedom, I get to do what I want to do. Greed. Mm. I must make everything I can make, and I must make it right now, are all uh, pillars in our culture. So because of self-centeredness and individualism, we're saying, I want what I want, and I want it now. That's the cry of this culture. The, the, the idea of waiting, delayed gratification yes. is out the door. That's your, mama's, that's your mama's generation. That's not my generation. And because, listen, here we go now, mm -hmm. because as churches, we're not preaching the whole gospel, but we're preaching what people want to 
hear. We're preaching what they want to shout to and not telling them the whole truth. Then we get a generation in churches that's growing up that look just like the world. And there's no difference between us and the rest of the world. It's the reason why when God says to us, when God says, I want you to have a tr Trinitarian kind of relationship in your marriage. Here's what Trinitarian relationship means. Selfless, self-sacrificing, self-giving. Selfless, self-sacrificing, self-giving. That's what makes the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, operate great. Well, guess what your marriage is supposed to reflect? The Trinity. So if you're going to thrive in that, then you have to be selfless, mm -hmm. self-giving, and you have to do the exact same thing Jesus does. But we don't want to do it because we're never trained to be selfless, self-giving, and self-sacrificing. So if you're raising kids, you ought to raise them to be selfless, yes. self-giving, and self-sacrificing. If you're raising boys, teenage boys, you've got to train them how to do that. Because if they don't, then we're not helping them become healthy mates. And what does the enemy despise the most? Anything that looks like God. Mm. So if marriage looks like God, then the enemy wants to destroy it the moment you say you get married. That's why he don't, he don't mind shocking folk. He don't mind that at all mm. because you don't look like God then. But once you say you're going to get married, no, he says... You got a bullseye on your back, yep. and I'm coming after you. And if you're not selfless, self-giving, self-sacrificing, you need to know, here we go. He's going to test you on all three fronts. I'm going to let simmer a little bit, Pastor. You can't just... <laughs> You know, you got to let people nurse their wounds. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Let them get a cup of water. You're right, you're right. Let them put some little Bengay and some little ointment on their body because you're over there cutting them. I like this part. I just opened the book up yeah. real quick, and it pulled up a green flag. You talk for hours without knowing the time has passed. Why is that important? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. That is so huge because when you can talk for hours without the time going by, it means you're not driven by something sexual, Ooh, which good. means now you're connecting either at a spiritual level either at an emotional level and the highest form of intimacy is not physical intimacy right. it's spiritual intimacy and so if you can connect at that level and truly enjoy a conversation and I'm not talking the first time the second time when you're only talking about facts I'm talking six months into it where you can genuinely have great conversations and, and go deeper and learn from each other and discover new things together in conversations that sir is priceless and it is a massive green flag but I'm not suggesting I'm not suggesting that just because you can talk to each other, that's enough. Just because you can have fun with each other, that's enough. And you need to make sure, this is so important, that not one person is doing the talking. Because mm. sometimes you have a talker, and then you have somebody who just wants to listen to them talk. <laughs> And you got to make sure that one person is not doing all the talking and you are joining. <laughs> because if, you, <laughs> if the person loves to talk, then you ain't never going to get to shut them up. Because they don't know how to put the other person's thoughts above their own. Facts. So it has to be a give and take conversation that's happening where even if you're the quiet, introverted one, they still want to pull the thoughts yes. out of you and they care deeply about how you think and not just you sputting off at the mouth. Which is why when you have a strong black woman talking to a dude and the dude lets her talk, lets her control everything, then she gets married and all of a sudden she's trying to complain that he can't leave me well he could never lead you because you always did all the talking yeah. because if you had somebody that could lead you you'd fight them the whole way through mm. Mm. i love when i just stop in the middle of the conversation yeah because you just it's, it's where people come <laughs> they, they go get an ice pack put on their eye because you don't punch them in the eye with some but, but it's the all i'm trying to suggest is let's make the hard decisions on the front side yes not on the back side yes that's all i'm trying to suggest yes when Makes you find sense. this, so as you've been um, counseling couples mm -hmm. and doing premarital, do you still do premarital uh, counseling? I do it myself sometimes, yes. And so when, you, so when you've done that, what are some of the things that you see are recurring issues that pop up that, that seems to be mm -hmm. the same thing? No matter what the couple is, this couple in January, they dealt with the same thing. And you find that as a recurring thing as culture has changed. Is there something that's identifiable that has been a consistent thing with couples all across the board? You're not. Going, I'm going to give you three things, but you're not going to like any of them. Oh, gosh. Number one, consistently across the board, if they're over 35, I find that they're desperate. Really? And it's desperation that's driving it. Yeah. Really? Yes. So, And it's usually the female in this case. 
It's usually the female that's so desperate to, to get somebody because I know what it is. She is she's climbing the corporate ladder. Things are going well. The only thing she cannot control is a, is a husband. It's a spouse. Yep. And so she's trying now to do anything to get married real quick so she can look the part as she continues to climb the corporate ladder. And so that's one from the but female it's also, side. But it's also, too, the biological clock. That, oh, that, absolutely. Yeah, you can't just extend the biological clock. And so you, yep. they're going to their annuals and the doctor's saying, hey, it's the time to make a decision. Yep. Do you want to freeze your eggs? Yep. Uh, you're at the age of 35. Yep. Now, at the age of 35, childbirth, you're at, uh, at high, high risk, risk yep. now. So it's like they're being motivated by... By I'm gonna call it systemic oppression because <laughs> you get you got mama saying this when you, you gonna give it. me a grandbaby yep. you got you see your friends you've been the bridesmaid in the last six weddings and so now you're 35 you like gosh I I gotta have these kids yes. and, and especially if they're trying to honor God that's you exactly know they say I'm right. trying to honor God I don't want to have a kid out of wedlock but then why is God withholding to the God who says I'm withholding nothing yeah then why is he withholding the one thing that I have been he knows Crazy. I desire this. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, how do you, how do you rectify that? Because a lot of times as, as, as pastors, it's hard to really, I mean, that's just life. You yeah. know, we call it life, but how do you give solace to that woman who says, I want to be married. I've been, I've, I've talked to some women who've been absent there for 12 years. Yep. Yep. I don't understand that. I just, I, I don't wish that on yep. nobody. Yep. Amen. But for 12 years, they've been, they've been, they've been practicing abstinence, desiring a spouse. Yep. And honoring God, paying tithes and offering, yep. involved on missions trips at the yep. church. Yep. She's involved. She's active. And no husband. And what do I tell them when, they, when that happens? What do you say to them? I said, I am very sorry. Honestly, before God, this is what I said. I am so very sorry that you have been taught incorrectly. Hmm. Because you've been taught that there is something more important than being satisfied in Christ. And you have been taught that to get married is more important than being satisfied in Christ. And I just, from the bottom of my heart, say, I just want to tell you I'm sorry for that. Because of, of men like me in the pulpit teaching incorrectly that the, your day is coming, your blessing is coming, your Boaz is coming, <laughs> your maid is coming. Yeah. Because of that, we have set you up for failure. And we should have never done that in the, in, in, in the first place. What we should have done is say that God is most satisfied in you when you're most satisfied in him. Mm. He really is. He's most satisfied in you when you are most satisfied in him. And because we're not satisfied is one of the reasons perhaps why you can't get because God's not going to give you something that's going to compete with him. And what you've done without no, you didn't do this intentionally. It's not your fault, but you have simply decided that God, a mate, finding one and being married is more important to my satisfaction than you. That's a sin. That's not cool. Not for Christians. But it's not your fault because you didn't even know that. And because you didn't, you've gone all your life trying to be, trying to desperately find this person because you think if you find them, then all of a sudden, life will be okay. Yeah. And now you're going to find out that it's not. Mm. And when you get married, you're going to find out. Here's the problem. When you get married, let's say God says, okay, I'm going to give you. You want it? Even though I don't want it for you right now, you want it. I'm going to give it to you. Then here's what you're going to do. Because you have trained yourself that you get what you want and that you're not satisfied in God, then the next thing's going to be a baby. Yeah. And after the baby comes, then the next one will be another baby. And after the other baby comes, then you're going to start working on that marriage. And then you're going to find out that he's really not the dude you really wanted. <laughs> so now, watch it now. What you did to get married was you said, I want to be happy, so I'm going to get married. Yes. So then I want to be happy, so I'm going to need a kid. Yeah. So then I want to be happy, so I'm going to need another kid. Yeah. And then I want to be happy in my marriage, and I have my kids that I really wanted, so now I really don't need you. So since I'm not happy with you, then I'm going to get divorced because I still want to be happy. There it and is. happiness has driven your whole life Ooh. because you've never found satisfaction in Jesus. So I would just say I'm sorry. I really am. For men in my role, women in my role, not teaching you the whole counsel of God, that the goal, the prize, is not a mate. The prize is satisfaction in Jesus. 
I felt the release that just took place. This is is something. My my whole body is trembling right now. I, I I felt something happen in that moment. That is somebody out here watching this episode. Hmm. That it unlocked something in them. They're in tears right now. Hmm. I see you. I feel you. I hear your heart. You are crying hysterically right now. Hmm. It's a release that happened, and this is the word that you needed because you've been trying. You, Pastor Conway, you don't know how many DMs I get. I got a hmm. DM last month with this lady who was saying she was asking God to give her a sign yeah. of, of not getting married with this guy. She's like, man, my my wedding is on Saturday. She lived in um, um, Amsterdam oh, wow. or somewhere, and she was saying that she had um, the wedding was on on, on Saturday, and she, uh, an episode I did, she watched it on Friday, and she yeah. said, listen, God, I need a sign. She said she watched that episode three times. Wow. And um, shoot, that that morning, she said, this is what I needed, called off the wedding that morning. Praise God, man. I said, Praise wow. the name said, of the Lord. I said, you know how hard that had to be? She Absolutely. Said, she said the other part about it, if I stay, if I gotten married knowing that in my spirit I don't feel peace, right, right. I don't feel a release, then I'm setting myself up for Absolutely. failure. And like you just said, you'll continue to chase happiness throughout the marriage, Every and time. then you'll say, I want to be happy. I want a divorce. That's it. That's it. What's number That's two? It. You say it's about three things. All right. The second thing woo, Ooh, Jesus. is that people get married to meet a need that only God can meet. Oh, God. People, I'm telling you, y'all just, just scoot up, scoot up, scoot up, listen to this. People get married, men and women, for the spouse, the person they're binding to, to meet a need that only God can meet, which means for the rest of your life, you're going to try and squeeze that person mm. to meet this thing. When all you have to do is go to God. Mm. Because only God can meet the need. The person, it is impossible for that person to meet this need. There are four of them. It's only God can meet them. Only God can give you the acceptance you want. Mm. Only God can give you the security that you need. Only God can give you the purpose that you need. And only God can give you the identity, define who you are. Mm. No Man or woman can do that. Only God can fully and completely do that. In other words, if you get mad because you think this dude going to give you security, you ain't going to have security. You might have money, but not security. Mm. If you get mad because you think they're going to define you and make you feel good about yourself, only God does that. Ain't no dude can do that. If you feel that when you get mad, you're going to be finally accepted. Your daddy didn't accept you. Your mama didn't accept you. Your friends didn't accept you. But this dude right here accepts me just the way I am. They're going to disappoint you and wreck your heart. Only God can accept you. So here's the liberty. The liberty and the freedom comes from accepting those from God. Thank you, God, for the acceptance that you've given me. Thank you, God, for the, for the purpose that you've given me. Thank you, God, for the identity that you give me and the security that you give me. And bask in that. Now that you already have them, now you're free to go serve the person. But if you're trying to get it from them, you will squeeze the daylights out of them and they'll run as far as they can from you. Number three. <laughs> you don't have no comment about that one, man. Just, you don't have nothing else to no, say about that. No, I just, I just, I'm just going. I just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Jeez, it's a lot. I'm, just, I'm, I, listen, man. Man, I'm, the reason, the mm. reason I wrote this book is because I am so passionate about this. I've made my own sheer set of mistakes, y'all, and I'm just trying to help somebody. Just as the guys be before me helped me get to where I am today, I'm trying to help somebody because if you decide that you're going to ignore these flags and keep running toward this person, it is, it is only a matter of time. Before your heart aches. And what we're trying to avoid is you hmm. and a broken heart because you ignored the signs. Is that all right, my friend? Man, it's absolutely beautiful. Jesus. I still want to hear this number three. <laughs> I want to hear what is these three things that people come through marriage counseling that you see consistent in all these different couples' lives where you go, listen, man, this is a this is a this is a trend. Yeah. This is a trend that I see. And if I can get y'all to wake up from this moment, because you can also see impending divorce. You'd be like, yeah, if y'all get married, y'all don't get divorced. Absolutely. You, know you, can what see, you can see it far and wide ahead coming. Here's no here, here, here. this one is a is a mouthful. Um they have some buckets. I call them the five buckets. Mm. They've got some buckets that have never been filled, and they get married 
to fill the buckets. Mm. That's what they're getting mad for. I'm going to give you all five. And then I simply want you, they're all in the book, which is why it's so important. Five buckets um, uh, that must be filled by your parents. And if your parents didn't fill them, then here's what's going to happen. You're going to go after other people to fill them for the rest of your life. So I want, they're all in there. So get, there are five of them. Get some notes real quick. Get some, get something to write it down with real quick. And let's walk through all five of them. Bucket number one. Teach. I call it the value bucket. The mm -hmm. value bucket. How, here's the question you ask and answer. How was I valued in my family? Mm -hmm. Because if you weren't valued in your family, guess what you want this person to do to you? Value. Yeah. And in an unhealthy way. So even if they're doing their best, it'll never be good enough. Because you're going to try and get more out of them. Number two, mm. the vulnerable bucket, the vulnerability bucket. Yeah. Here's the question you ask. How was I protected by my parents, my family, and my friends? Because if you weren't appropriately protected, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to now um, blow things out of proportion as opposed to treating them in a healthy way. Bucket number three. I call it the imperfect bucket. And the question that you wrestle with is, how was I expected to behave in my family? So you have some people that in their family, they're expect, you can't do anything wrong. Everything needs to be perfect. Everything, and there's some people that it didn't matter what you did, go buck walk crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that has an effect on how you relate to your spouse. So if you're not aware of it, and if you're not working on it, then ultimately what happens <clears throat> is you now blow the other person out of the water and force them to become and to treat you like you want to be treated. Bucket number four. We call, I'm giving you all of this because whether you get the book or not, just write it down. It don't matter to me. What matters is that you fill, you figure out ways to fill the bucket so you can be healthy. The dependent bucket is bucket number four. And the question they have to wrestle with is, how were my needs and wants taken care of in the home that I grew up in? If you had to fend for yourself, if nobody appropriately took care of you, if people abused you, if people took advantage of you, and, they, and, and all of that, then you got, you got some deficiencies in that bucket. You got some buckets with a hole in there. And if you don't know and begin the process to get healing in there, then you're taking that into that marriage. And here we go. You know the rest of the story. And then the last one is openness, on spont openness and spontaneity. How free were you growing up? Here's a question you have to wrestle with. How was I disciplined contained or not contained growing up. They're so You know this. You've seen them dudes where they, there was no discipline in that home. Yep. Well, guess what they're going to do when they come into your house? Yep. Guess what they're going to do? Then you've seen some that they were so disciplined, if you if you raise your voice at them yeah. in any way, oh my gosh, I've been abused, I've been abused, I've been abused, I've been abused. And all of a sudden now, you have people that are so imbalanced yeah. because nobody ever taught them these five buckets that should have been filled but weren't. So now you look to the whole world to fill them for you. Now, parents, listen to me. Scoot up again, parents. If you are a parent of a kid that's under 15 years old, you better work diligently and faithfully to make sure each one of these are mm. affirmed and uplifted. You know what? That's a challenge because I'm, the whole time you're saying this, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of uh, my son, uh, my nephew son who I adopted. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about um, my other son, Armani, who uh, I adopted. And, you know, I'm thinking about, I was like, God, that is true. I, I, I see all of the effects of not having those buckets filled yeah. as a, as a child. Yeah. Appropriately. Especially when you're yeah. dealing with kids that are in the foster care system. And that's what led them there. But it's like my heart is bleeding listening to that. And it's like, gosh, I got to. With, I just gotta, I gotta take the challenge even do more. And I was like, oh, I'm doing this or whatever, but you can always do more. Yeah, um, I, I do want, I do want to tell you this though. Yeah, That's you're not, right, you're not taking this book. I'm keeping this book. <laughs> I'm, I'm letting I'm letting you know that now. I just I, you're just not gonna take it. Uh, I'm gonna wrestle you. Um, you know what? Here's good news, man. I got I got I got about five or six. I'm gonna leave with you, good. and you can give them to anybody good. that you deem necessary. Yes. Just give them to some of your um, subscribers and go from there as gifts. All right. Well, let me tell you, I appreciate that. When I tell you this is loaded, like I'm I'm like this is really really good. Like my, my. like I've never heard it as practical as this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like yeah. you hear all this stuff. I, there's a lot of information out here. We're 
we're in the information age. So you hear a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And a lot of times it just becomes a lot of noise and rhetoric. Mm -hmm. But like I'm hearing this and I'm going, wow, like I'm literally feeling chills like, God, this is good principles to start off having a healthy chance at having a marriage. You, you know, you, we look at the uh, statistics all the time saying 50 percent of marriages end in divorce. Right. But we don't unpack what led to that. That's you it. know, why That's is it? it. Why, why, why is it? Yep. You know, you can't. Uh, I did a TED Talk um, uh, last year, and in the TED Talk, I talk about marriage is the only license you can acquire without any type of education behind it. Ain't you know what I'm saying? Sad. You just walk down there and get it and destroy somebody's life. You yeah, know what I'm just saying? Just like that. I can't get behind a car like that. I can't Nothing even do else. somebody's hair without getting a license <laughs> behind it. I'm going to have to get a cosmetology license to do your hair. Yeah. But I can actually do life with a person with no prerequisite, training. no nothing. training, no yep. nothing. That and so sad. that's what I look at this as a, as a training manual to help get us right so that we can at least have clarity while we're dating and be able to not so much weed people out, but yeah. able to measure them up against these different flags and be like, okay, I like this. I feel I feel the green light to keep moving forward That's and keep good. moving forward. Uh, especially the stuff where you're talking about uh, character and um, expectations. Yeah. And, you know, because sometimes we have some unhealthy expectations. Before we, sure we go, do. I want you to touch on that, on expectations. Woo! Okay, here's the expectation flag, and here's what it says, everybody. It says this. It simply says, you expect marriage to fix the other person. Or the green flag says, you both understand that marriage involves selflessness. That's good. The second one is, the second green flag under expectation is, you can confidently show up as your authentic self. Oh, that's important. You can you you can be who you are. What the problem in dating is, you come and you put on a show. Yep. Once the person know that you're interested in them, it becomes a show. Yep. You're like, okay, let me make sure I look good, smell good, all of yep. that. Well, that ain't that ain't gonna be who you married to. <laughs> you're gonna be funky. You're gonna act a fool sometimes. All that. But we. But you have to be able to just be you. Because if you're not you, they're gonna find out one way down the one way or another down the road. So you've got to show up. As your authentic self, be you. Don't try to be nobody else. Just be you. And if the other person can do so, then that's a very healthy way. If they can, here, here, here it is. If they can tell on themselves, hey man, here's what I'm not good at. If they don't know what they're not good at, and you have to highlight and tell them, you better run as fast as you can away from that person because I'm just telling you there's a lot more where that came from. And if they're not fully aware, self-aware of the things they're good at, the things they're not good at, the things they're still a work in progress at, then, then here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to be the one that tell them every time. Mm. You're not good at that. You're not good at that. Can you imagine if you meet a dude? And he think he good at something and he's not. And he think that's his purpose. And he's running down the path thinking, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I can do this. Yeah. But he cannot talk in a microphone to save his life. <laughs> or he don't know how to balance his own checkbook. But that's what, now you're going to have to lower the bad news. Bro, this ain't you. Do something else. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine that? Yeah. They have to be their full authentic self where you know they're fully aware of who they are and who they're not manage your expectations well let me tell you a fun fact i took this girl on the date um a couple of weeks ago and my truck i got rear-ended mm -hmm. and so i my my bumper was bent in and then i had like this dent on the side of the truck and i said when she comes here i don't want to pick up in my truck with a dent in it right so i called my homeboy shout out to my boy Micaiah, and i was like man let me borrow your mclaren you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i can pull up i can pull up and pick up from the airport now hey. and then i started thinking i said how long can I hold that up? And I was like, I don't want to give her a false illusion right. that I got a whole McLaren. I right. said, I don't have that. And I said, I'm going to pick up in this truck. And so I picked up on the truck and she said, oh, I have a dent on the side of my uh, on the side of my G-Wagon just like this. And that's I was it. like, oh, okay. So we got matching dents. You know that's what I'm saying? That's and, and she said, and then she said, I, she said, I felt like you had a truck. She said, I know that you Texas men got trucks. I just, I just felt like you had a truck. And it was just like, it was like a Regular. whole cool situation. That's right. And so I kept saying, I said, I want to make sure that I show up authentic in every situation yes, but it. that was a moment that I had where I was like man this I hadn't took my truck to get fixed yet and I mean God should have <laughs> took it a couple of months ago man I'm just this and God was like 
It's a truck. What? What do you? Come on. If a woman don't. If a woman don't she, judge you by a truck, you can have any car on, you want. If she on. if she care about a truck, bro, you don't want her to begin with. That's right. Like, you just so, don't want. So, so you don't want to hear my stories about that. Yes. Yeah, so let me tell you a story about uh, when I was dating Jada. I'm dating Jada, y'all, and I'm, I'm driving a Toyota Corolla. I'm a seminary student. I you know studying the Bible and stuff, and I'm driving a Toyota Corolla. The problem is we're in Texas. It's uh-huh. 100 degrees, and I go up to invite her to a date. Her daddy's like, "Who is this dude? Who is this Jamaican?" <laughs> and y'all for real no joke 100 degrees i have no ac in my oh, car man. <clears throat> zero ac so here's what i know for sure i know that that girl loved me because she came all dressed up <laughs> came into that Toyota Corolla, I say, yeah, you got to wind the window down. And it didn't have no button. You had to do this. You had to do this right here. This is what you had to do. So we wind down the windows. I would say, it's okay. We're going to make it. And so and so we got to the restaurant. And then she, and then she had to go in the in the woman's room first and wipe the sweat off and then reapply her makeup. So here's what I here's what I know. I was my complete self. I'm Jamaican. True and hard. All right. So here's what I was convinced of. She ain't going to marry me for money. She's going to marry me for love. Okay? Because I'm going to know that this woman right here, she love her boy. Okay? So I was totally convinced up front because that woman loved me. And I kept that car for one whole year. And whenever we went on dates, we didn't take her car. She had a little fancy car. But we took my car because I had to make sure she was there for the right reasons. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So why would why can't she drive her car? She did sometimes. She did sometimes. But I just wanted to make sure <laughs> we were all right in my Toyota. Did she, did she say anything about it? Did she say, I can't believe, like, we ain't going to get this fixed? <laughs> like, like, did but she, she knew I didn't have no money to get it fixed at the time. So my wife had to look at potential in the future. Okay? she Because it wasn't there right now. She had to look at potential in the future. Well, and so ultimately, obviously, we got it fixed. We got a new car and all that. But, yeah, initially, that's where it was. But usually, though, because, uh, this is a long story, but because I, I believe that you shouldn't live off. You know, I believe, literally, I'll tell you what I believe. I believe you should live off of 60% of what you make. You should never live off of more than that. So even when we got married, I still had my Corolla because we lived off of 60% and we couldn't afford to get one. Yeah. And we weren't going to spend the 40% to get a new car to impress people who didn't care about me. So it's just a principle Teach. that we lived and she could appreciate that principle. I love it. But what do you say to the woman that's living off a of potential of a man that's 45, 46 years old mm-hmm. and uh, he has dreams and they don't seem to be realized and he got a Corolla with mm-hmm. no AC and, then I would and say, stay at home with his mama? Then I would say, uh, uh, ain't no potential at, <laughs> at 45, 50 years old. That's who he is. And he's going to be all right. And that who, that, listen, listen, for real now, for real, no joke, that's who he is. Now, you just need to realize you might have to move in with mama too. If you're okay with that, then I'm good. If you're not okay with that, then girl, you better keep on moving. Keep on moving. I'm just telling you. <laughs> so, so this amazing book is called Watch the Flags. Where can they get this book, Pastor Carl? Oh, they can get it anywhere. Get it. Go to Amazon. You can get it from Amazon. You can, if you want to go to a church, you can get it at a church. <laughs> Spotify, wherever you want to get it from, uh, not 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 um, Shopify, yeah, yeah, Shopify, not, not, not Spotify, Shopify. You can get it there. Um, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere books are sold, you can pick it up. So, what's the biggest testimony that you will? What would you like to accomplish from people, from readers of this book? If yeah. they came back and they see you uh, out and about, or walk up to you at church and says, "I read your book and it did what for me?" Where you feel like? That was the purpose. Excellent. What I would love for you to say is thank you for making me think deeply about the second most important decision in my life. Mm -hmm. And because you allowed me to think deeper than just what does the person look like? Do I like how they make me feel? Mm -hmm. But you went deeper than that. You were able to make God honoring decisions that made sure you set yourself up for the best marriage ever. That's a great way to end. Let me tell you something, Pastor Conway. Mm. Two-year anniversary since you've been on this podcast. Um, and when I tell you I'm full, like, like this Appreciate is, this it, is amazing. This is giving great framework and reference mm-hmm. to uh, take into my 2023. Come uh, on. Can you believe this is the end of the year already? C- I like, can't do it. Just, it's crazy. Yeah, it flew by. It flew by. We are wow. approaching 2023. Oh, my goodness. And I believe God's going to do something really uh, powerful. What, what have you heard? Have you have God spoken a word in your life about what 2023 is going to unveil? 
Man, you know what? I uh, I haven't revealed it yet. Okay, okay. You're trying to get me to yeah, reveal something early. Really. So something you're going <laughs> to preach on New Year's or Lord something? Lord have mercy. Yes, sir. Are y'all having, are y'all having New Year's service? Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. We, well, because, because we, we're on the is... north side. One community. North. We have it. We have, listen, here's what we have. We're having Christmas Eve services. We're having Christmas Day services. <laughs> we're having New Year's Eve services. <laughs> we're having New Year's Day services. <clears throat> listen, <laughs> we got work to do <clears throat> because more than ever before, People need hope, yeah. but more than ever before in history, people need to realize that Jesus Christ died so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And my prayer is that this next year, God will open up the doors for people to fully appreciate who he is in their lives. And so I just can't wait for it, man. Cannot wait. Excited about it. Excited about the future. Cannot wait. Listen, Pastor Conway, thank you for joining us on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I know people found so much value. Hey, y'all give it up for my boy, Pastor Conway Edwards. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Can I say one thing before you go? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say I'm proud of you, man. Well thank done, you. my friend. Well done. Two years ago when we started, uh, when I when you interviewed me, I, I, I thought, who is this dude? <laughs> and to see what God has done in you and through you, I just want to say I'm proud of you. What well do you done. see from a pastor standpoint? What do you, because pastors have a different <laughs> You uh, really want to know? Here it is. Yeah. Everybody, listen, this is so huge. Finally, too many pastors got married too young, so they don't know what it feels like to be single and in the church. Mm. Yet still, 65 to 70% of churches are made up of single people. Jeez. And so I am honored that we have a young man trying to make sure there's a, there's a voice, yeah. there is content, there is discussions around topics dealing with being single, and really trying to pursue Jesus Christ. Oh. So on behalf of the body of Christ globally, I just want to say thank you for filling this void for the body of Christ so that we can attempt to become who God's calling us to be. So well done, man. Well done. And to be honest with you, if I didn't plan a church, this right here is what I'd love to have been doing. So thank you for filling that void. I love it. So Pastor Conway, well, you ain't going to have me crying. So you had to take <laughs> Because you're not going to do this to me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a G. I'm a whole gangster in these streets. Thank y'all so much for watching the podcast. Now, that's, that, that's an honor because of the fact you led one of the greatest singles mm. ministries. Uh, and like I said, I just sit at your feet and just learn. So, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, keep doing Pleasure. what you're doing, brother. Thanks, everybody. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship Slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, 
Our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Let me tell you, I am so honored to have had Pastor Conway Edwards on the podcast today. I just believe God is so intentional. Two years ago, I made a vow of abstinence and I had Pastor Conway on the Dear Future Wifey podcast I'm telling you, y'all know who Pastor Conway is. It's so hard to get him to agree to do something like this. This is really out of his wheelhouse, but God has favored me to um, to be honored by this man of God on my podcast. So I don't take that lightly. We are going to begin the second uh, session of Lit One on One. We just graduated the first group of students. It was absolutely life changing, man. When I tell you, God is God. Just He just does what He does. But if you want to be a part of that, make sure you go to thelitsociety dot com and register. Class will begin on January the second. So make sure you go look that up. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey, dear future wifey. Triggers. Triggers will be like landmines in the early stages of our relationship. Past traumas will rear its ugly head to create doubt of our divine purpose. Our marriage will be under attack even in the dating stage. A landmine is defined as an explosive device concealed under or on the ground and designed to destroy or disable enemy targets. Such a device is typically detonated automatically by way of pressure when a target steps on it or drives over it. Landmines are typically laid throughout an area, creating a minefield, which is dangerous to cross. First, let's note, landmines are designed to destroy enemy targets. We are not each other's enemy. We are each other's purpose partner. Secondly, such a device is detonated automatically by way of pressure. Our pressure will come the realer our relationship becomes. Are we the real thing? Memories of the mishandling of our hearts and regrets of how we overlooked past red flags will threaten our budding union. Landmines are typically laid throughout an area, creating a minefield, which is dangerous to cross. Minefield is spelled M-I-N-E-F-I-E-L-D. Let's replace the first E with D to make the word mindfield. The secret battleground is in our minds we will press forward through each trigger and use it as an opportunity to heal to challenge our healing and to recommit to our love we won't be defeated our love is unstoppable your future hubby
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.